to adapt to connect does not mean you're going to change what you're about, not going to change what you stand for, not going to change who you are. We're going to change how you communicate so it fits with the other person's language so they can get you, so they can understand what you're trying to, 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 to persuade them about, what you're trying to communicate. Make sense? Great. So basics of personality profiling. There's really only four basic personality types. It's really that simple. And one of the things that always bother me is that, yes, you can break it down to 16, <laughs> you can break it to 32, you can go down to 256, you can go down to the fingerprint of each person can be a different personality. However, how do you use that on a daily basis? Well, you don't. You use things that are simple on a daily basis. Asking people, they want loyalty. Now, a subset of that, they want relationship, but they want loyal relationships. Does that make sense? They are very much going to be loyal to you, and they want you to be loyal to them too. Here's a problem with it, though, is you can break loyalty very easily. So you have to be extremely cautious because you break loyalty with them. You ever heard of somebody going postal? Yeah, these are the postal people. They're quiet. They're nice and friendly. They love you to death. They're so encouraging and wonderful, and you do something that's a little disloyal, and they kind of get quiet. And then something else happens, and they get a little quieter. And they're having a problem, but they're never going to tell you about it until that straw that breaks the camel's back, and wham! They pull out their AK-47 and shoot everybody in the post office. Now, it's also a wonderful thing that they're loyalty-based, because what happens immediately after they've killed everybody? They feel terrible. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to kill. I just got upset and I don't know what happened. And then they go and interview the people who live next door to them. They were always the nicest person. They were so quiet and loving. They actually helped me get my cat down from the tree when he was up there. Inspiration. Their environment. It's explosive. All right? They tend to think in explosions, do things in explosions, so you're going to see stuff everywhere. Or you'll see it's completely clean, even no in-out box even. Because what do they do? They know you're coming. They clean it all off the desk into a box and shove it up under. Or they won't let you in their office and they meet in the conference room. How important is coffee? Coffee is important, right? Well, I'm going to talk about coffee from a little different perspective. If you're in a meeting with somebody and they ask you if you want to take coffee, what do you do? Do you always say yes? No, you don't. All right, let me tell you why. Let's go to the four quadrants here. We've got our reds. Look at the red guy here. Does he want you to take coffee? What's coffee imply? A waste of time. I've either got to go get it for you, or I've got to go get somebody else to get it for you, which is going to waste their time. And I want them doing work, getting her done, right? So with reds, they offer you the coffee because they feel like they have to, and they love you when you say, no, let's just get down to business. There are three things that you want to remember. First is you need to understand yourself. Look in the mirror. Who am I? Second piece is understand your audience. Understand who you're talking to. And the easy piece is adapt to connect, right? That's the easy piece. Aha, I know what to do now. I can speak their language, right? 